With the big releases by Skidoo and Polaris recently for Snowcheck 2023, um, I know there's been a lot of speculation about what's happening with uh, Arctic Cat. And something happened today, I got some pictures that I wanted to show you, and I thought it'd be worth spending some time going over rumors from dealers, both in US and Japan, that I've got some information on, and also a bit of speculation on my own behalf on what's going to happen in the Arctic Cat release. You can say what you like about Arctic Cat, but they are marketing geniuses. So I'm a guy who's got three cats in the shed, and I really like them, but due to the Arctic Cat genius, there's a good chance that I'll never buy one again. And that takes a lot of talent. At the moment, I think their strategy is to let other companies make a huge launch and secure all the buyers for the next season, and in doing so, remain totally invisible. Now, that's not easy to do. If you do a Google search on Arctic Cat 23 release date, it's astonishing that you can get absolutely nothing. Again, it takes talented social media and internet SEO managers to be able to eliminate your presence from the internet. How did they do it? I don't know, but they've done it. Actually, that's not quite accurate because they've also, due to their immense skill, been able to keep these two items at the top of the search rankings. Is Arctic Cat going to stop making snowmobiles and is Arctic Cat going out of business? That's the sort of thing you really want to have up front so that people are asking the right questions when they're thinking about your product. It's marketing genius, I tell you. Designers call this approach negative space. The absence of something makes the presence of something else more obvious. So by being invisible and letting Polaris and Skidoo take all the limelight, it makes Cat more visible. And it builds genuine excitement because even though no one will buy Arctic Cat because they'll have already bought a Polaris or Skidoo with the snow check period finished before Arctic Cat has even made an announcement, you know, it's the anticipation of not doing something that makes it even better than doing it. Anyway, let me run through a few things I've heard and everything I've learned and a couple of things I might have made up or someone might have told me. It might not be 100% accurate. And then I'll get to those spy photos, which are quite shocking and going to get you excited about Art of Cat all over again, just like you were when we, when we last. Um, so if we take the current Alpha Hardcore as a um, base model on which to hang our speculation. Number of things they could do, and my personal bet is that they're going to put one of those little flashing brake lights like Polaris has got, because that's something that really makes a difference to every rider. There's talk of a different coloured reflector. Again, hard to know if they'll go that far. I think there's uh, pretty strong confirmed speculation that they'll change up to three bolts because um, they had a supplier issue, so they're gonna get a slightly different bolt in three spots. There is some crazy speculation out there that they might go for like a whole new color across an entire sled. But, um, I mean, frankly, no OEM's got that kind of development and research money, so I don't think we'll see that. But one thing that I think is a possibility is a dual seat arrangement. And that could be either one seat above the other seat, two times higher, or could be one seat behind the seat for two times longer. But it seems to me you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck out of that. It'll look different, it'll behave differently, and frankly, it won't cost much to develop. So they've probably done that. Another area that seems to me right for development is taking this 10 inch wheel and making it a full 26 inch. And if you look at the way this is engineered at the moment, it seems clear to me that you can easily well, it was basically it was designed to take a 26 inch wheel from the start. And a bit like Polaris is saying that the 900 was always, well the 850 was already designed like that, so it would be a 900 from the beginning. I think we're gonna hear that kind of talk from Arctic Cat where they prove, or at least have the marketing spin to say that when they first put the 10 inch wheel on, it was actually designed for 26. So I guess we can be pretty assured about the compatibility and reliability. Not sure about the flexibility and the vulnerability and the suitability. But there's quite a few other abilities that will go pretty nicely with a 26 inch wheel. When you're considering what design direction a maker like Arctic Cat might take when they're looking for a new model release, I think one thing that's worth remembering is that basically the engineers at Arctic Cat 
or Polaris or Skidoo or Yamaha. They're just people like us who are passionate about sledding and passionate about using the word passionate because if you don't use the word passionate, you're clearly not passionate. So I just like to use that word quite a lot, passionate, passionate, passionate. So they're really passionate, these engineers, and they sit around dreaming up ideas, challenging convention. And sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it's a dumb idea, quite often it's a dumb idea. And often it's a really good idea, but the accountants won't let them do it. So it's just the same as having no idea. But when you think of it that way, there's a lot you can probably learn about which direction Articat is going just by looking at a machine and chatting with friends and coming up with ideas. Now I've got to tell you, one of the things that struck me when I was in the shed just before, looking at the Alpha and just thinking about which way is Articat going to take this machine, which is already pretty developed, works very well, and looking at that rail, I had a total eureka moment and realized I've been staring in my face for two years, three years, two years I've been riding alphas now. And I went over the rail, a spare rail I have, which I just keep on hand, and noticed that it fits perfectly alongside the current rail and could almost be a dual alpha rail. So when you think about that, obviously they can't call it a dual rail because that would be like, well that's like do with the linguistic contortions they're going through after dumping that stupid T-motion, right? They're calling it everything except removing it, they've just made it a single double, I don't know, they're using language because they can't go back, which means instead of removing it, they've added not having it, like you add lightness to make a sports car go better. So Alpha and the Articat and Alpha can do the same thing. So instead of removing the Alpha and making a twin rail, they can increase the Alpha to make it a, a mono monorail or, and get this, this is what, this is what made me realize that they may be even smarter than I thought. When you look at the Alpha rail, there's actually room for two more rails, one other side. So you could have a triple rail, it'd be a triple mono rail, so it'd be like a mono 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 rail. And again, it's startling how connected all these items are that would be known as the Alpha M3. So where have we got to? I think if you put everything together so far, what we've got is a high likelihood of a flashing brake light, like the Polaris, and up to three, possibly four new bolts, and potentially a different color reflector, and possibly, probably this will be the big selling point, will be that new mono monorail, as a precursor to the mono 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 rail, which will come out maybe next year once the mono mono rail has proved itself, and that'll be a continuation of the mono 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 mono, and there won't be any sense that they've like given up anything. It'll just become more mono. So I mentioned earlier that the engineers who design this new stuff that we get to enjoy every year are just people like you and me, passionate people, passionate about their passion for the sport about which they're so passionate. And they're just sitting around having ideas, but they have the tools, the engineering ability, and the finance to make them a reality. After our ride today, where I got the spy shots, which I will come to in a moment, we sat around having a chat about what could be possible if we just made a blank sheet rewrite of where Articat could take the machines. And we came up just with some books and a glove on a table with a whole lot of different configurations that we think would make a massive difference. And they're all potentially doable. We had the, like a multi-directional ski track. Our first thought was, why do we only have two skis on a snowmobile? Where did that idea come from? Well, there's been pissing around with one, but that's not really effective. So we thought, why not have eight skis, twin tracks with a rotational center body, and a series of generators to make this whole machine electric powered and able to move in any direction at the same time. So, I mean, this was five minutes sitting by the fireplace and imagine what the engineers at Arctic Cat are doing with four years since their last release and a bunch of ideas which they probably just can't wait to tell us about but just have decided not to. Okay, thanks for your patience. Let's get to that scoop, the shot I got of the Arctic Cat development mule today that they don't want you to see. 
We ducked into this gully to get out of the wind for lunch and came across a bunch of sledders we didn't know. And amongst their equipment was this one blacked out M6, could have been an M8, that was clearly under development. This sled had radically different front geometry. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but the skis were closer together at the front and wider apart at the back, giving it a V-shaped angle of attack into the snow. I'm convinced that this is what we're going to see. This is a big one coming out from Arctic Cat when they make their next announcement. Not sure when it'll be, probably maybe 2026. 20, I couldn't measure it before they uh, came to stop me filming. But it looks to be about an 18 inch front end and at the front of the ski and then going through to about a 38 at the rear. Which, if you think about a skidoo, which is now 34, it just blows it out of the water. It means you'll be able to really attack tight trees and get stuck into them. The really exciting thing about it is this is pre-counter-steered. So if you're heading across a slope, you're already counter-steered before you even get to the slope. And counter-steered both directions. The only downside, perhaps, is it might make you walk funny. But I love it. I love the out-of-the-box thinking, the attitude. I'm hoping it comes out with this launch, but I think they've probably got their hands full with those new bolts and the reflector. Still, it shows that they're looking ahead, they're looking out for the customers and they're listening to us. They're listening to the mountain riders who want to get into ever tighter and tighter trees. Look, it was a super exciting day. I probably haven't made as much sense here as I could have if I'd really sat down and thought about it. But I just wanted to get the info. A lot of speculation, a lot of rumor. I'm excited, hope you're excited, I hope Arctic Cat's excited, I'm pretty sure Polaris and Skidoo are excited because couldn't be better for them could it? <laughs>